Despite the resolve by many senators to overrule President Muhammad Buhari's veto on the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, the senators now backed down from this determination in place of the move which had seen the collection of about 75 signatures for the proposition of the upper house or the upper chamber resolved to liaise with the house of representatives on how best to handle the president's rejection of the electoral reform bill now according to president of the senate Ahmed Lawan, the provisions of the 1999 constitution do not permit the upper chamber to exclusively take action on such matters in the absence of the house of representatives which had already embarked on vacation. Now, joining us again is Tunji Abdulhamid. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, uh, Tunji, for staying to speak with us on this issue. Thank you for having me. So, um, earlier in the week, we talked about this issue, and there were many expectations. People were expecting... Most people were right bang on it, saying that they were sure that Mr. President would not assent to this particular bill. And, of course, true to it, Mr. President returned the bill. Of course, he laid out all of his reasons for uh, not assenting to the bill. And many had pushed, even the NBA had pushed that Mr. President, um, that the Senate President, rather, um, should override Mr. President's um, um, assent and pass this bill into law. But, uh, again, as a legal practitioner, why do you think that these issues have not necessarily been dealt with? Because the... Senate is now saying they're going to liaise with the House of Representatives on what to do instead of going against Mr. President, although they had gathered 75 signatures. Again, why do you think this is happening now? And do you think that Mr. President does have a point in, in terms of, you know, the issue of direct primaries and causing trouble within the political parties? Yeah, let me start from that uh, angle. I think I agree with some of the majority of the reasons given by, the, by Mr. President regarding the direct primary. But I, would, I do not expect that that should be a reason, enough reason to, to, to throw away or petition the, uh, not to sign the, the bill. I say, oh, because you can't throw away the, the, the bath, uh, the water, with the, uh, the, the baby with the bath water. What the president has done, as far as I'm concerned, is throwing away the baby with the bath water. What I expected the president to have done before now was to have also been informed or, or interested in that uh, be why it was going on in the house and to let them know his interest and whatever they are, they are not doing whatever he, he thinks it will work or will make him sign he should have let them know we should have agreed and, and work together and return it back for them before the 30 uh, expiration of 30 day for them to rework it and send it back to him for, for before before taking decision on it but now that he has taken decision that will take the bill back to square one and that, that is bad for us and that was what happened exactly what happened in the eight assembly where the president was uh, rely on uh, there is no A or B, A, B is missing, A, C is missing there to reject a, a B that was worked for, for over a period of years or months and with a lot of money and time spent on it. So I think this attitude will not help us. The president should be should be concerned about the nation and not party interest. So I, I, I do not see the, 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 what the president has done in that regard. But, concerned. The president is, as, but the president is a subject or rather he is a product of a political party. Of course, he would put party interests as a priority one way or the other because he's also looking at interests. Don't forget, politics is a game of numbers and interests. So why would he not prioritize his party's well, interests? This, 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 this is not about the party because I, I know majority of the people at National Assembly are from APC. And if that, if that is the case, they, they, should have, they should have even passed the bill at all. So the, the, his, mem his member, member of his party agree with the bill and they even have uh, confidence uh, uh, that that bill is good for us. And then if he, he, it's not about, I don't want to agree that it's about the party. The bill is not about the party, it's about in, a president in, uh, in personal interest or some people who want who doesn't want the president to sign it. Yes, I, I like I said, I agree with some of the majority of the things that the that president raised in that But I expected him to have done that before before the expiration of that time. But the, the bill will be reworked and then back, uh, take back to the national and review and then uh, represent it to him. As it is today, we are back to square one. And I, 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 I'm not surprised that the National Assembly no, uh, is not able to fetter the president. Or I, 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 I would not be surprised if it did not fetter the, 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 the power of the president in that regard. Hmm. Well, joining us is Professor Richard Wokocha. He's an associate professor uh, of public law at the River State University. Um, thank you very much, uh, Professor, for joining us. Thank you. Um, so looking at this issue, uh, like I said, a lot of people have been speaking. Um, a few days ago, I spoke with 
a member of the House of Representatives um, re representing Donga um, and um, um, federal constituency. He is um, actually a member of the People's Democratic Party. And he made an allegation saying that the National Assembly, which is led by the APC, which has the APC as majority, and of course, this, uh, Mr. President is also of the APC, he said that they have no plans whatsoever to activate this particular Electoral Act bill, to make it law before 2023, that this, this is a game, according to him, he said, it's a game, and it's a waiting game of sorts, that they might just play, you know, the people uh, until it's close to elections, then they will say it would be, it's a bit too late to sign it into law. Um, listening to this, do you agree, or do you think that there is something else in the works? Professor Wakacha, can you hear me? Oh, I think you lost. Uh, we lost the connection there. But back to you, um, back to you, Tunji. This is what the PDP member said uh, a few days ago. Do you think that that's what the APC is planning to do again for 2023? Remember what happened before now. Yeah, yeah I tend to to follow that uh, line of thought because uh, I do not see reason why the president would use that particular grant to say I'm not going to sign. When the bill was passed by a member of your, of your party, majority of those who are, are, not are members of the APC and they, they, they didn't believe in that uh, 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 bill, that was why they, it was sent to the uh, president. And I, uh, I, I do not, uh, I, I, I believe it was a ploy. I, I'm, th I'm thinking so. I'm thinking so. Why would it be a ploy? I mean, if, it, if they didn't want it in the first instance, they would not be pushing so, far, so, so hard. Uh, and all of those deliberations that were made were made mostly by the number of people who are supporting the APC on the floor of the National Assembly in both houses. Why put in so much if, effort and not necessarily want it to come to fruition? If, if truly they believe in it, they, they, should, they, they will by now be thinking about to petrol the president's uh, 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 assets. If, uh, they're, not, they're not thinking that regard now, and you can see it. They're not thinking that. So if they, that means they, they don't have a belief in it, or they, they, they respect one person than the entire, uh, compared to the entire country. Because the president alone, uh, interest is not override, cannot override the interest of the majority. They pass the bill because they believe the big country. And they, uh, they are... Well, let me, uh, let me talk about, you know, the, 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 the concerns of the president in this issue, um, especially the issue of direct primaries. And, I mean, many people have, have said oh, if, if we agree to go that way, then we're going to have to stagger the primaries, being that it's going to be expensive, it's going to be time-consuming, it's going to thin out INEC officials, one. Um, there are also those who say that, well, now that INEC has said that the financial burden for the direct primaries rests solely with the political parties, does that mean that there will be a cap for a new cap for political parties in terms of financing? Let's not forget also... That's an issue where Serap has taken different political parties to court. That issue is still pending. Is that not going to be a concern of sorts? So if the president is saying parties have um, a constitution of sorts that they should follow, they should amend those constitutions before we say, well, it's law that you can have a direct primary across boards. Should that not be something that we should be taking a look at? I, 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 like I said earlier on, I am in support of the pre Mr. President for the reason given. But what I'm saying is that you don't wait, as a president who is interested in, in the interest of the country, you don't wait to, 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 see, to wait for an error. When you see an error when they are planning the bill, you raise their attention to it and draw their attention to it. Since, since we are acting in the best interest of the country, not just to sit back and then expect them to say, we are going to rely on this error. And then we, I'm not, I'm not, I don't believe that it's because of direct primary. They, even though I believe that the, 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 our, primary, our party can deal with the march, should be left to the hand of the party to determine. This is their duty, their responsibility. The government should have, the law should not determine how a party should run its affair in that regard. They should be their, their duty to do. No, and like I said, I also agree on the issue of finance. It's going to be too expensive and, and logistic. We can't cope with it. And it won't, it won't change anything. But that's what we will see, we see prefer. People will see determine who, who will come a candidate, those who are in, in, in it. So how, why are we now wasting time and money? So but, but I think generally, probably it's because of the Electron uh, transmission of results. Probably that's, that's the reason why they are afraid of passing yeah. it. I, I think we have Professor Walker back. Professor Walker can you hear me? 
I can hear you clearly. Great. I'm going to let you attempt um, the question that I asked earlier on before we lost uh, the connection with you. Why do you think that there's this back and forth? And why do you think that the Senate and the House of Representatives have not been able to grow a piss to be able to deal or veto Mr. President on this issue? Well, first, um, if you follow the development of the, of the bill uh, historically, you will find that there was a divide between legislators who said they were doing the people's bidding and politicians in top political positions who usually had the prerogative of using uh, their political positions to determine who stands for election and all that. At the time the bill was passed, you saw movement by uh, groups, governors forum or governors, uh, being opposed to it and arguing it would be too expensive and uh, all that. It wasn't the political parties that were arguing. Um, it would be too complex and all that. And Eric has said it's not too complex for us. We can do it. I, I think that the constituencies that need to speak on this issue have spoken and they do not have problem with it. So all I can make of it is that um, the powerful political groups that have grouped themselves against the bill uh, and the passage of the bill into an act uh, by the presidential assent have succeeded in uh, putting pressure on the president. Uh, you saw them meeting with the Attorney General and the urging the Attorney General to uh, advise the president against it and all that. So it wasn't a function of, oh, this what is prescribed in the bill would be impossible for us. And by the way, how do you determine what is expensive and what is not? As a public and as a nation, if the responsibility is giving people opportunity to choose their leaders. And you have a process that has withheld selection of leadership or recruitment of leadership from the people in all these years. Why should correcting it be considered more expensive? What are we spending money on? What is the value of the things on which we have spent much more money than what this one will cost? So I, I do not, those reasons don't make sense to me. Mm. Is it that it will be too expensive? Therefore, let us keep robbing the people and let politicians run their show, continue to run their show. Are we thinking about this country? Are we thinking about developing this country? Are we learning from the experiences of the past and the present experiences? Or we just want to be marooned the way we are and allow those in control to continue to be in control? It's mm. really difficult to think of leaving a, a position and moving to the next uh, level. But if we want this country to remain a country and we want to see this country live up to expectation, we need to get the power back into the hands of the people. That way, their officials will behave with responsibility. And that way, things will get done. Okay. So I'll, I don't I'll... see anything expensive about it because we are spending much more on irrelevant things. Okay, I want to go to something that was said by um, the Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, CACO. Uh, now, they urged lawmakers to revisit the bill with the inclusion of the disabled and other issues that the bill had initially failed to, um, you know, um, add to it. Now, they're also saying that um, the bill failed to cover corruption among political parties, um, inclusion of women and youth, um, disabled persons, you know, experiencing a total blackout in parties at different levels. They've even said that um, nobody's willing to lend these people support. So they're saying it's not just enough for you to bring back this bill, even though the president has not assented to it, add the necessary things, and then, of course, go ahead and pass it into law because you have the powers. Um, so, but do you think that it is advisable? Now, you're a, law, a lawyer, so you would be able to tell us this. Is it advisable for the National Assembly to even take into consideration all of these other amendments? Will that not, all, again, drag on uh, uh, this issue and so much so that it might not get the signature or pa be passed into law um, in time for the elections? Uh, definitely. Uh, once you go into that, if we drag it uh, beyond the expected period and uh, uh, get us like getting over the entire circle again, to present again to the president. Uh, for me, I think that what is critical and what needs to be done is to override the veto of the president. Whatever amendments you want to make later, you can make amendments. 
But what is critical is enabling the people to choose their leaders. And it begins with uh, the party primaries that we have talked about. Because if you present a number of uh, uh, persons selected by uh, money banks and uh, uh, political, uh, uh, what do they call them, godfathers, you are left between the devil and the deep blue sea. So give the party the opportunity to choose the most popular candidates whom they will present to the people and give people opportunity to choose the best uh, from those that are presented to them. Uh, it's not just the primaries alone. We have to be able to take this thing to the very end. Uh, if we are talking of um, getting electronic voting completely, these other arguments about the disabled and non-disabled will be of little moment because virtually everybody in Nigeria now has, um, has a, an Android phone. Mm -hmm. And those who don't have Android phone can get to uh, the centers and they can do what they have to do here. So it will take off a lot of these things you are talking about, as well as uh, security issues that we have been experiencing uh, all these years. If we're a serious country, we'll take every one death in the electoral process as a very serious issue, not to talk about the number of deaths we experience in this country each time there's an election. So I think what they should do is override the veto of the president. And thereafter, these proposals can come up and they can make amendments where necessary. Hmm. Back to you, Tunji. Um, as much as we're saying that we want to put, continuously put pressure on the members of the National Assembly to do the bidding of the people, we did do that, didn't we? Before this bill was even, um, you know, um, escalated to Mr. President, there were so many things that Nigerians were asking for. And there's the same thing we saw with the PIB um, PI, PIA before it became PIB. Uh, there was so much, you know, issues that were unattended and then they still decided on what they thought was fair as opposed to what the people who put them there, inverted commas, open and close, um, uh, asked them to, you know, do. So again, whatever pressure that Nigerians begin to mount again on these people, and I'm talking about Nigerians at all levels, will it change the minds of the people who sit in those um, in those chambers, also note, noting that these, some of them might want to rerun for office. Like, like I said, Aaron, before I answer your question, I want to disagree with the uh, associate prof that uh, the direct primary, uh, not direct primary or indirect primary, eliminate or dis disqualify some three people from voting. It's, it's not correct. Democracy is a, by way of representation. We are, we are all not, we are, we are all of us are not addressing assembly. Those are assembly are representing us. Can we say, can we now say because we all, are, all of us are not addressing assembly? But we don't have a, a proper decision being made on a, by, by all of us. All of us cannot be there. The, the, and those, these, those who delegate who are, who are appointed, the, the, those who become a uh, candidate, are elected or, or, or uh, by, by, by the party. This is a party affair. All, all people who are fighting for are not members of the party. Even the, uh, most of the people that are complaining are not members of the party. The party will run their affair. If the internet said they can do it, but he's asking that the party should run the, should, should run the cost, where would they get the money from? And that's why you will see, they will say, a form for a governor will not be 50 million or 100 million. And people will not say, why are they, why are they putting a, a such a, which amount of money? Because they need money to run the party. And they need money to run uh, affairs of the party. It goes beyond those, uh, all this I was talking about. You see, the, if, you are, if you are involved in the party activities, you will know that too. The, to, to run a primary or direct primary. In fact, the, the, those parties that, that don't have money or that don't be, uh, don't be in government for, we're not able to even conduct that primary, that direct primary that we're talking about. To go from one place to another, Every uh, all the corners of the of the country is a huge amount of money. Even if it's ten thousand out of the personnel from INEC, calculate it to all, to all the entire uh, world in the country. It's going to be a huge amount of money, and that will not reduce the influence of the governor. As far as I'm concerned, look look at Lagos State for instance. There was a lot of money in 2019. Yet, somebody lost. Somebody was popular than the, the current governor at that time, and yet he lost. Was it about direct primary? Was it about direct, and it was about, about, about way of direct primary? Why why did the, why why did the popular kind of lost? Because once somebody was somewhere saying this is where we are going, and this, that's where we went. So we, we are, except we are deceiving ourselves. No party, all these parties do not, they don't have data that can determine who and who are members of the party. I can vote for APC and I, tomorrow I also go and vote. We have PDP and do that. We spent the better part of this year re registering its candidates. You're telling me that all that information has been tossed in the dustbin. I cannot believe that. I say verifiable, it cannot be verified. How do you mean Whenever it cannot be verified? These people have party no, see, for example, membership for example, cards. The They're they being re-registered, so they have their information, their wards, their local government areas. That should be the main purpose of a re-registration process, except you're saying it was an exercise in futility. 
I agree with you, but have you have you ever seen display of any voters uh, members members of any party in anywhere before election? Have you ever seen it? Nobody, you won't even see the list of those who are who are qualified to vote. You just see somebody just bringing the list from somewhere and just picking people and just look at Anambra State. The last election, the 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 the, the APC candidate was said to have scored a three hundred something uh, vote to win the direct primary. What did this score at the general election? If they have up to three hundred thousand for a, a member. Why, why, will, why did he not score up to 300,000 in the May election? That is the question to, to, to be answered. Direct primary will only just bring up figure. And it will not give you any, any, any better results than what we are having now. I, and it will, not even, it will be a, a waste of time. But like I said, I do not expect Mr. President to, based on that, the, 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 the move the entire, uh, sorry, refuse to sign the entire B. Because there are so many other things that are very important in that uh, B that the president should, should consider. And the issue of a uh, woman, the, the other, other aspect that they are talking about, the disabled, the woman equality or whatever. As far as I'm concerned, there is no, I'm not aware of any law in the country that prevent any, any woman from protesting for election. I'm not aware of any...